I'm an acupuncturist. I treat and we get busy. And when we talk about technology, sometimes our brains as wellness providers frags out. Some of us are just like tech wizards, but most of us, it's not our natural skill set. And so today, as we get into Google business profiles, we're going to be talking a lot about online technology, and I'm going to try to make it as simple as possible. I appreciate everybody chiming in over here. I'm seeing the chat and it looks like you guys are around North America so far. Um, and so here, I'm going to share my screen. Great. And if there's someone on the Jane team, if you could unmute yourself, just let me know you're seeing the screen and I'll go on. Yeah, we can see it. It looks good. Awesome. Okay. So we're going to talk about three steps to optimize your Google business profile. And before we do, I want to thank Jane. I mean, not every EHR company is doing this kind of stuff. And I believe that Jane is ahead of the curve. I keep seeing people do switch videos, which I love. And uh, so thank you, Jane. Thank you for taking the time. And thank you, participants. I know you could have squeezed in one more client, one more patient, but you're taking some time to work on your business rather than in your business. So as we go, just a couple of bullet points on me. I, I became a licensed acupuncturist in 1998. I then started in a hospital and I was really good at business. So in 2004, I started professional coaching and have been working with wellness providers ever since. I do own a, a wellness center with my wife in a very small town in Eastern Oregon, Joseph, Oregon. Uh, I'm the host of the podcast, Wellness Renegades. Uh, we are really going by storm and you can check that out on iTunes and other Spotify, all of it. And I'm a family man. I love online and I love wellness. These are my four kids. I got two olders, two youngers, and uh, that's enough about me. So we take a look and I really have three objectives for today's webinar. The first is understanding the power of Google business profiles for free SEO. The second is to review simple efforts to maximize the return. And what I mean by that is many, many people open a profile and then they never look at the metrics and the metrics can really help you get more patients and clients. And the third is to identify ways that you can spend less time on social media rather than more. In addition, my hope is number one, watch the replay, you can stop and start it. Like really my hope is that you get more patients and clients because the wellness world needs you. You can't go into a supermarket in the United States without seeing a line at the pharmacy. And there's a need for your medicine more than ever before. And the more people that are searching for you, they can find you if you're doing a few things. So we'll do that today. The second is if you're here and you're not on Jane, but you were invited, switch, take 30 days, check it out. I definitely think they're better than, than everyone else on the marketplace right now. And so consider that. And then the third is feel free to contact me if you run into challenges and you need more help. So social media. How much time are people spending on social media? I want you to put it in the chat. Just guesstimate it. How much time, how many hours do you think you're spending on social media a week? And I'm not just talking business. I'm talking just spending time on Instagram, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on YouTube, and on TikTok. So I'm just going to take a look at that real quick. These are latest stats. 43% spend six hours or more that are small business owners, 25% spend six to 10 hours, 11% spend 11 to 20 hours, and 7% spend 21 or more hours a week. And unfortunately, this is an upward trend. So if we look at stats year over year, every year, the hours get longer. And I believe that you may not want to do that. You may be doing it because you want more conversion. You want to see more patients. You want to see more clients. And a little bit of it is fun, but a lot of it can just steal your life. And so we're going to talk about how Google business profiles can be an excellent way to start to move some of your online efforts in a way that the return is actually bigger. 
So just Google in a nutshell, this is Sergey and Larry over here in 1996 in their college dorm room. And they're like, let's create Google. It's hard to believe all that has happened since then. And they started ads in 2000. So ads have been around for 23 years now. Google AdSense came in 2003. YouTube, they bought YouTube in 2006 and they brought on Google Analytics. And in 2014, so what is that? Six, seven, eight, nine years ago, they started business profiles. Now, just a couple of years ago, they changed the name from Google Business Profiles to Google, uh, I'm sorry, other way around, from Google My Business to Google Business Profiles is what we have today. Now, the amazing thing, when you think about it, I looked at last year's revenues, 279.8 billion with a B, billion dollars in one year. So, why are the reasons that you want to switch over? There's so many. <laughs> I've been drilling down into the last 24 months into Google business profiles, watching hundreds of videos, looking at what works and doesn't work, working with individuals, getting their profiles set up. And I can tell you, I'm sold. Um, the first reason I'm sold is because it's free. It doesn't cost you anything to maximize your profile, to get your profile. And actually, Google often sets you up with a profile when you have a business even before. So if you're just coming on and you're like, I don't know anything about Google business profiles, I do recommend going online and putting the name of your business, the town that you're in, the state that you're in, see if you pop up on Google Maps. And if you do, you might have a profile that you don't even know about. So the first reason, free SEO. SEO is amazing. And that's search engine optimization. That's people that are looking for you already. And if you've gone out there and you've talked to consultants, it is super expensive. We're talking thousands and thousands of dollars, and it doesn't have to be that way. With blog strategies, with Google business profiles, you can do this all for free. Simple off-ramp for your business. I mean, that's a great reason because it's not that you're sending out your newsletter or you're on Instagram trying to get more people to, to follow you and get your attention. They're already looking for you and they're typing in acupuncturist near me, therapist near me. The, these are things that are happening every day. Now, when we look at the mind staggering numbers, we're looking at 4.3 billion users on Google. So that's if you're doing online business, that's 4.3 potential billion potential customers, which of course that's a ridiculous statement, but what if you could get 20, 40, 100 new patients or clients from Google alone? Now, 97% of the users search for local businesses online. That is amazing. So 97% of that 4.3 billion are already looking online for services. 86% of those are using Google Maps. And so one of the strategies that I want to drop in today, as opposed to advertising Google AdWords, you can actually advertise on Google Maps. And that's the, the cheapest, most affordable way if, if the free tactics don't work that I'm talking about today, um, will jump you to the top of the Google Maps search engine. So word of mouth, we have always known this. I've been in marketing for over two decades. Word of mouth is always the most important part of your business. And so, of course, your patients, your clients, they're referring to other people. And Google Maps can help with that. So what that means is it's supercharging SEO, where Instagram does a little bit of SEO. So you might pop up in a Google search on Instagram on a third page, fifth page. But Google Business Profiles is going to pop up on the homepage. And so when people are looking for acupuncturist in LA, you can pop up. And I want to talk more about that. I think old school marketing is flawed because often it was expensive. Uh, if you've looked at the research, it was print media. It was the yellow pages. It was postcards. Most postcards these days uh, go directly into the trash bin. So you might be an outlier. So I'm not saying it can't work. I'm saying rarely does old school marketing work these days. Everything is online based. 
um, and face-to-face -face still works. So if you have a donation clinic, if you have uh, a wellness fair, those can be incredibly valuable when you have strategies in place. The main commodity that I want to talk about today is time, because it is the only resource that we can't get back. And so if you're using your marketing in the smartest, most strategic ways, the return on your investment of time is going to be the greatest. So really, three vital steps. That's what we're going to talk about today. I'm doing a little time check. We're 17 minutes in already. And step one is to review your listing if you haven't already. Many of you have, a lot of you haven't. And so step two is to add content. And I'm going to talk about what kinds of content work the best uh, and the kind of content 1% or less are doing that maximizes the SEO on it. So I'm going to give you some secret hacks today that are super valuable. And I believe if you just experiment with them, you are going to get some immediate return on the value that you put in. And the third is review the metrics. Most people set up their profile, they let it do what it does. And there's a difference, and I'll probably mention this a couple of times on the, on the webinar, there's a huge difference between a static website or a static Google business profile, meaning you got it up and it just sits there and it doesn't do anything, and a dynamic one. And the dynamic one being that you are adding to it and it's constantly hitting those algorithms and you get rewarded because you're engaged and you're interactive with it. And so I'm not talking about hours and hours and hours a week. Uh, I'm talking about a little amount of time regularly and consistently will make all of the difference. So I'm gonna escape out of this and I'm gonna switch over to this. So someone on the Jane team, if you can just let me know what you see on my screen. We see the your business on Google page. Okay, great. So if you don't know, you can go to Google business profile in a Google search. Just type that in, Google business profile. And that'll take you to a sign-in page. Now the sign is your Google account. If you have a Gmail, if you have a Google business profile, you have an account. Some of you, you're against Google. They are a conglomerate. They make billions of dollars. And it might be you know, a little bit of a Robin Hood for you to get an account so that you can get in the visibility lane of all the people looking for you. So it might be worth that extra step. Now, if you go to sign in and you sign in, you're going to actually then come to a page like this. Now, on this page, first thing you want to look at is this profile strength. What does it look like for you? And if anyone's signing in right now, I'd be curious, like, what are you seeing? If you're having trouble signing in, go on into the chat, let us know, and, and maybe there's a Jane app person or maybe I could help you. Now, we're just getting our profile set up, and I'm going to give you some hacks. I saw some chats come in. I'm just going to take a quick uh, look here. Looks good, looks good, looks good. Mine's green. Yay! Mine says looks good. Great. You, Alex, Marala, Melissa, Eric, you guys are doing great. All right. So then <clears throat> I come here and I go to edit profile. Now, the name of my clinic is Wallawa Avenue Wellness, and this is really important. If you try to hyphenate and you put, like, I live in Joseph, Oregon, I did that for a while, and I realized that all my hard work could be taken away from Google in a split of a second, because in the terms of service that you agree to for using Google business profiles, it says your business name needs to be your actual name. Anything added on is not okay. Now, I don't think they do regular audits, so maybe you could get away with it. But if you're building it, there is a hack. And the hack is 
In most states, I don't know about Canada, so you'd have to check your province, but a doing business as, which is a DBA, is really inexpensive. So I have a corporation and I can add a DBA that says, Wallow Avenue Wellness, Joseph, Oregon is actually the business name that I operate under, like doing business as, right? And so then if I do that, the reason that I would do that is if you're in a, a Calgary or you're uh, Seattle or you're New York City, and there's just hundreds of other providers doing what you do, that's one way to separate yourself. Now, even if you don't change your name, there's many things you can do to still pop on the homepage of Google Maps. One of those is business categories. So oftentimes I work with acupuncturists and an acupuncturist will put acupuncture clinic in primary, and then they just leave it. And you can add so many other things. Like I don't have, oh, I do have alternative medicine practitioner. In my clinic, we have an ND, we have acupuncture, we have massage, we have yoga. And so that is business and business category. So if you haven't add additional categories, you can add them. Now, these are uh, fields that have already been created, meaning you can't type something in. You have to go for what the categories that Google has created. But the description is super important. So in the description, think keywords. What are people looking for? How are they putting it into Google? So I used to have wellness center uh, with acupuncture, I think, something very dumbed down. So I changed it and I went holistic wellness center in the heart of downtown Joseph, Oregon, located near Enterprise, Oregon, Lostine, Oregon, Wallowa County with acupuncture, natural medicine, massage therapy, functional movement, yoga, kettlebells, group classes, infrared sauna, also offering tiny house retreats in Wallowa County, which we do. So that's a mouthful, right? But for many of you, you might have a subspecialty in therapy like EMDR or um, Hakomi. You might uh, be an acupuncturist that really deals with fertility or pain. You want that in the description. We go to opening date. We go to phone number. Make sure the phone number is correct. We go to website, right? And then Jane app, we go to virtual care. So you can put your Jane app virtual care, or you can put your landing page of your website with your Jane app link on it. Now we go to business location. Also really important, there are outliers where whatever reason, your pin is not dropped in the right place. When I started, because I built the clinic from the ground up, the pin was over here. That's not good. You want to make sure that the pin is exactly where your location is. If you have multiple locations, um, there is a way, it's an advanced way to have uh, multiple spots. And we're not going to talk about that today, but you could Google it or you could reach out for more info. Now, service areas, most people don't fill this out. I live in Joseph. I'm 20 minutes from Lostine. I'm 10 minutes from Enterprise. And it'll always give you the county. And so put that county information in there. We go to business hours. Good to have those in. And then uh, we can scroll down accessibility. Uh, I have wheelchair access parking lot and wheelchair access entrance. Uh, you also can be uh, add LGBTQIA. You can add women-owned business. So there's lots of things in the business information that are very simple and will help you maximize before we even go to adding any content. So I'm going to stop there. I'm going to go into the check. And uh, uh, what if you have multiple locations? Just answered that. Uh, so it helps to include your name, business name, category, right? Just double checking. So yeah, business name, go with whatever your business official name is on your license. And then you can always add that. How do I know what email is associated? Um, if you have multiple Google emails, you'll have to just try them um, to see Mackenzie. Uh, mine doesn't even have a rating. Um, Samantha, that means you haven't claimed it yet. So claiming it will help you get started. 
Now, just a side note on claiming it, uh, sometimes Google is having you verify. So you have to take a video of the front entrance and then uh, your, your wellness space, and you can send that in and then they'll approve you. Oftentimes you just sign up for it and they send you a postcard and you get started that way. So we're going to go back here. Any other questions before my business does not show up on, on Facebook under the where icon? Uh, I don't have any ideas, Lacey, right now. Uh, and I have one other reposting question for Jason. How would virtual business work? You know, it's interesting because I have another company, a virtual business, and I tried it and it's working. I think Google Business Profiles was created for maps. So really for brick and mortar, but I have a brick and mortar office. And so I tried it and it's working well. Um, you can't do it without an office. So you definitely need a, 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 a address to get started with. All right. So we come back here and we are here. I'm going to switch this down here and go back to slideshow. And then let me take this chat out of here. Great. So just a quick review. Name, cover photo, reviews, website, hours of observation. These are just some simple things. Now, Soho Acupuncture Center, I just looked up. I think they're all in New York. Um, they have 21 reviews. So they're getting five-star reviews, which is great. They have the address. They have the website. They have a menu um, for online. They have uh, another website, which is the same. So this is online scheduling here. Now we go to a competitor. I don't know how close because I don't know New York well enough, but two, 280 Madison Avenue to, sorry, to uh, 217 Center Street. So different zip codes, they must be close by because Manhattan's pretty small. Acupuncture and holistic health notice this cover photo. Now, if I'm going for acupuncture, that doesn't entice me. This could be more enticing, but I like that it says everything it does. This is the same strategy that I've used for my clinic. This person has not claimed the business yet. So someone else might try to claim it, which would not be good. And uh, there's no website. So notice up here, you can't even click over to the website, you definitely can't make an appointment. You have to call in. So we're at 11.30, ad content, super important. So this is where we go from a static Google business profile to a dynamic Google business profile. Now, I think Google business profile is actually a lot simpler than in Instagram. Uh, I definitely get more conversion from uh, posts. And I don't mean likes, I mean patience. Uh, but I find Instagram more fun. Uh, if you're on this call and uh, you want to help me over on Instagram, because I do like to have fun over there, you can just follow me at Wellness Renegades. I'm trying to get to a thousand because some people won't even offer me to do a webinar because I have under a thousand followers. I've never done anything. I've never done bots. I just add photos and uh, certain things. And so I don't really even have a strategy over Instagram. It's not my thing. My strategy is over here. Now, notice I did say I did have Joseph Oregon. I actually started that because uh, there's four acupuncturists in the county. Uh, I live in a town of 1,200, and the acupuncturist two, two cities or two towns over was beating me. So I added that, and then I realized, yeah, I'm doing too much work. I'm not doing the DBA. I'm going to go ahead and change it. So I changed it back, and now I'm in compliance. So there's nothing they can do. So add content. This is the 1% that I talked about at the beginning of the webinar. You can add video and no one is doing it and it will skyrocket your SEO. Uh, we do offer kettlebell classes and I'm amazed that nobody's adding video. I think it's because when you click to add a video, it says add photo. So people don't know that you can add video there. 
Now, people add videos all the time on your Instagram reels. You're showing patient client testimonials. You're showing how beautiful your space is. You're talking about nutrition. You're showing acupuncture cupping. You're talking about your therapy practice because the best marketing is actually educational pieces. So don't think of marketing as one more slobby, slimy thing you have to do. Marketing is actually sharing education about how your services and your products help people get healthier. So where you add an update, you can add a photo. And where you add a photo, you can drop in a video. Now, I didn't write this down, but there are certain compression um, stats. I didn't send this video that I shared through any compression. I just took it off my iPhone. I added it. It got approved. It's uploaded. Another secret. So you guys are getting a lot of hacks today. Uh, Geotagging your photos. Now, if you're in your clinic and you have uh, location settings on your photography on your phones or whatever you're using, it'll automatically take that and place it as long as it's on. Now, it might not be on because you want more privacy. You don't want people to know where you are at all times. If you don't know this, like if your photos are on all the time, people can track your methods and know exactly where you and your kids are. It's a scary world. You got to figure it out for you how you want to navigate that. One way you can navigate it is by geotagging, where if you go to this site, GeoImager, now notice that there's a, a vowel, couple of vowels missing there. So geoimgr.com. You can get the coordinates off Google Maps. You can pin it to the photo. You can copy and paste it back. And then it'll give you a photo that's pinned to your location. Now, if this is too much, just follow the steps. Step one, go to this website. Step two, get your, your longitude and your latitude and put it in. Step three, copy and paste it back into the, the uh, website or uh, this, this area here. And then you can even add keywords, which is amazing because if your photos has keywords, you are going to excel in the search engine optimization. Your keywords may be acupuncture in Ottawa, right? Therapy, um, you could put therapy near me. That would be an interesting keyword search. So I'm just going to take a look here at the chat real quick. Turn on messaging. Um, we're not going to do that today. It's a little more advanced, Whitney, um, but it, it, it can be helpful and it'll just push messages to your Google uh, account. The similarly, that if you have a Google voice, Google phone, it'll push messages there. Um, Geotag for photos that you add to Google profile. Yes, that is true. So you, once you have your, your geotags on your photo, then you can upload them. Oh, this is a great question. Autumn B, Autumn, do you recommend horizontal orientation for video or vertical like reels? I recommend both because we don't know if the viewer is watching via phone or a laptop. So if you do a little bit of both, that's the best way to do it. Oh, if you kept getting scam, spam, fung, fung, I'll have to research that a little bit more. Is there a spam filter for it? Uh, if not, I would turn it off. I don't have mine on. All right. So reviews. Reviews are great. Now, JNAP has a plugin. It doesn't push them. There's people on the call that can share more about Google reviews, but I love that JNAP has gotten involved in Google reviews. I love Google reviews. The more reviews you get, the more you're going to raise in the search engine optimization. I've seen people go from the third page of Google Maps to the top three just by Google reviews alone. This is a review I got a month ago. Um, it just says, I'm five and a half hours away from Portland. I did not say, share how far you're coming. So it was amazing to get this review for a couple of reasons. One, it gets me more views. It pushes me up in the search engine optimization. 
it also feels good to know I'm making a difference with my patients. So we often don't ask for reviews because we're afraid or we live in that part of Canada that's like, you can't ask for reviews. Now, for those of you that live in that part of Canada, I think it's still okay. You'll have to talk to your licensing board. If someone does a review and you don't ask for one, you're, you're still going to pop up. Now, is the board going to come after you? I don't know. I'm, I'm not involved at that level. And I, I actually am not a big fan that certain people aren't allowed to actually say, was I helpful or was I not helpful? Story for another day. Now, when you get reviews, it's quite amazing because online influence is bigger than it's ever been before. Now, what do I mean by that? Uh, a week ago, uh, I saw Meg one, I thought it was okay. And so I was like, should I see Meg two? I always go to Rotten Tomatoes. It's like, if I'm gonna see a movie, my time is precious enough. I don't wanna see anything that has low reviews because it's not worth my time. So I saw that Meg review got 29% and I, it was bad on both the critics and the audience because Rotten Tomato has both sections. And I was like, no, I'm not, I'm, it's, it's not worth it to me. Now, you're so not invited to my bat mitzvah. Maybe, maybe, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll watch that, I don't know. But online influence is bigger than it's ever been. Now, what do I mean by online influence? What people say about you online is more influential than not more, but it's equally, and studies have shown this, than word of mouth in your clinic. So if Sally is a patient of yours and she gets a treatment and she loves it and she tells Jill face to face, the same thing happens online where people that see your online reviews of strangers are influenced in the way that if you have five-star reviews, they wanna come see you. Now, this is also, we're trained this way now. It, I think it started with Rotten Tomatoes and Amazon. Uh, a week ago, I wanted to get a new ski helmet. So I went online and I saw this one. It costs $209 and it gets a three-star review from only one person. Now, my head's important to me. And when I crash, I want to make sure I'm protected. So I go to the Smith Holt Snow that has 4.7, over a thousand reviews and 62 answered questions. So Smith has my business. Now, the other thing is this helmet was $49 rather than 200. So it's just an important thing to remember if you get more reviews, it's gonna very likely, unless you're an outlier, convert to more patients and clients. So Jane does integrate with Google reviews. Um, this website, because you're gonna get a review on, um, I'm sorry, you're gonna get the slides. So you'll, you'll get this talk so you can slow it down learn new things. And that is uh, the URL that you want to look at to talk about your Google reviews uh, and Jane working together. So I usually ask, I said three questions. There's four. I'll change it on the slide later. Uh, one, were you skeptical about trying uh, the service? Two, what specific results did you achieve? Three, how did those results benefit your life? Four, would you refer to us? And if so, why? Oftentimes you ask for a review and people are just, uh, they don't know where to go with it. They're like, I'd love to give you a review and then they never do it. So giving them a few prompts can be helpful for them to get really good and really specific because these reviews are like, yeah, I was afraid of acupuncture. And uh, my pain went from uh, eight out of 10 to a two out of 10. And I stopped taking ibuprofen every day. And uh, I now get to hike where it was my favorite activity I had to give up. I highly recommend, you know, your clinic and, and uh, I'm kind of riffing on it, but you see how this gets them in the ballpark. The third area to add content, which I say another 1% does, is FAQs. Most people don't even know that there's FAQs on their Google business profile. And so what happens is people will ask, do you treat motor vehicle accidents and is it covered by insurance? And there's no answer because it didn't get triggered in an email or somehow you weren't looking at your profile. And so I think it's okay to subseed questions. So have your inner community go and ask, 
Um, what is EMDR? What type of therapy works best for anxiety? You know, what, whatever you want to be able to do FAQs and those FAQs pop you in the SEO because again, you're dynamic, not static. So just a review, you wanna add those photos, you wanna add videos, you can add updates uh, to, to your clinic or your practice. You wanna add reviews, you wanna do FAQs. So I'm gonna come here. Where do you enter the FAQs? If you scroll all the way down on the right side, like pull up your clinic and it'll show up on, on Google on the right-hand side, scroll down and there'll be a section that says, ask a question. Where do you get questions submitted? Anyone can submit a question online. You could ask those questions to yourself if you want to. How often should we be posting content on Google Business? Uh, I recommend once a week. <laughs> I mean, really, you could do it more often, but I'm going to show you my minimal strategy and my maximum results uh, because I think that you could start to do Google business like Instagram. And if you're on Instagram like five hours a day, um, you need to switch things up unless you're an influencer and you have sponsorship and you're doing all of that. Can we post daily? Absolutely, you can post daily. All right. So. I'm going to come out of here. So there we go. So I'm going to come back here and we're, we're going to go to metrics. I know we are coming up on time, which I'm doing well. We go into uh, edit profiles, which we did. If I go to read reviews, it just shows me who gave a review. We talked about messages. If you're getting a lot of spam, turn it off. It's not worth it. Um, adding photos, you don't have to add an update, which you can add photos here. So if I click on this, uh, if I add an update, I just do a description, just like I can pull over from Instagram what I'm already posting there. I can add a photo. And then I often do the call now, but you could actually do book and have your Jane app scheduling link right in there. If you don't want to go through all that, you just want to add a photo, you can go here. Now, remember what I said, photo. Oh, they changed it just recently. This did not say or videos here. It said drag photo, select photos. And so someone got wise and was like, no one knows you can do a video. That's great. That's within the last couple of weeks. All right. So performance is where I want to go. This is business interactions, meaning not views, but people that actually interacted with my business uh, profile. Now, remember, if you didn't catch this in the beginning of the webinar, I live in a town of 1,200 people. That's total, right? And I got 776 interactions and I got 1,500 views. So you can look here, this is really helpful information of um, 820, so 53% of them were in mobile, 32% were desktop, 12% were on maps, and 4% on desktop maps. Now, it's also super helpful to get into performance because I've been doing a lot of stuff on acupuncture, but that's not been the primary. The primary has been massage and my massage therapist is not currently booked out. So I can do that. Now, the other is people are looking for my name. The more my name is on a web um, search, the more I'm going to pop up. Now, you can, this is really confusing. So I'm going to show you really quickly. This is the sign-in page, like you sign in and remember someone said, can you do this for online business? This is my online business, so I do it there. We're talking about this today. Now, if you want, you click this button. It took me two hours to find this and you can go actions and you go to insights and it'll download all the insights. So I just did this the other day. Um, and it's just another way to get a spreadsheet on all the stats. Now, I don't want to do that right now. I come back here. Someone talked about FAQs. I scrolled down um, and 
and I have my reviews here. Uh, no, so it's really hidden in here. Somewhere over on this side, uh, you'll see ask a question and it takes me about 10 to 20 minutes every time I search for it and then I find it. So I'm not gonna do that right now, but it is over there. So I'm gonna come back here. I'm gonna to go to the uh, last slide and then I'll get into the Q and A. We're good on time. Again, next steps, just go to your Google business profile. Like if you haven't claimed it, claim it and add to it, like add content, add photos, add videos, add updates. I can guarantee at least 80% on this call have an Instagram account and you're adding to it and you're not like for many of you, you're not seeing the conversion you want to see. Just copy and paste that stuff and push it over to Google business profiles. It's not going to take long. Uh, switch to Jane if you had. If you want more support, you got my email, Wellness Renegade Podcast. And then um, I do have an offer today, which is uh, you want a private one-hour tutorial with me. Um, it's 525. Uh, you get that for 325 if you're a Jane member. So that's only for Jane app uh, members. And now I'm going to... Uh, stop my share and I'm going to go into the chat and uh, I just want to hear somebody for the Jane team that you can see my face. Yeah, we can see your face. It's all good. Great. Okay. So um, uh, for the Jane team, were there any questions you scanned that you want me to answer before I get into a few of these? I'll scan through, but nothing stuck out to me just yet, but I'll go back as, as well and take a peek. But yeah, you can grab any that does stand out to you. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, do you have a way to get reviews? Is there a way in Jane to request clients? That came up before the call. Jane, uh, team, someone want to answer that? Yeah, I think Elle on our team is here. She can pop something into the chat about that. And I think she's already had some some chats with some other people in there. So Elle will write a response in the chat for everyone around that. Um, and then I did see one that I thought you might want to reply to. I think you've already kind of talked about this a bit, Jason, but um, Joseph asked, do I need to respond to reviews? Yes, I recommend you respond to reviews because the people have taken the time to send it and then it lets them know that you respond. So it's just customer service. Now, the big question is, do you respond to reviews that were two years ago? It's not going to hurt. You know, they're not going to be mad. You can just say, oh, I just got educated that uh, I can respond to reviews and want to thank you for being a part of our wellness. You know, I, I always say, I'd like to just say thank you for allowing me to be on your wellness team. I say things like that. Now, there is a big question about reviews. I do another training on reviews. We're not going to get into it today. But what if you get a bad review? Like, you're like me. I know you are where you get a hundred people that love you and one person that just doesn't like you. And it is so easy to get like freaked out about that one person. And the truth is that one person can take, you know, a hundred percent of our time where a hundred other people were saying really great things about us. And so, um, what I've been told is you can respond to the review, but don't ever apologize online because once you apologize online, um, you've admitted the guilt and you're, if it ever becomes litigious, uh, there's a record of you um, accepting guilt. So you, uh, that's just my one, two, three on that. Uh, and what I say, I, I haven't really got a negative review, but what I tell my clients who have gotten reviews, because sometimes you get someone who's a little mentally unstable and they want to blow you up. And what you can say is, I uh, really under, I'm really hearing about your experience. I'd like to talk about this offline. Please contact me. And that's the best way to get started there. Um, can you explain DBA again? Yeah, a DBA is a doing business as so like uh, Coca-Cola has hundreds of companies underneath of them. They're all named different things, but it's the same company. And so uh, you're legally on your Google business profile, your business name has to be your legal business name. 
And so how do you get a B DBA? You, you, the same way you got a business license, you go to the license department and you say, what's the cost and how do I register for a DBA? Uh, categories, yeah. Categories are great because it's it's letting you know that you're not like a barber shop, you're not like a, a you know, a ketamine clinic, uh, unless you are. Uh, I don't remember, but if you type in, uh, to Google business or just Google search, uh, Google business profiles, it'll give you a list of all the profiles that you can, or not profiles, but categories that you can put on there. Ah, <laughs> Joseph. Yeah. I think it's great to uh, just to say, thank you. It's, it's nice to be a part of their team. Uh, you know, Robert, uh, this is a really mixed message. Remember that responding to Google reviews may expose the client's confidentiality. I've heard two, two thoughts on that. One is, uh, yeah, you're reviewing the confidentiality, but because they posted it online, uh, uh, I've also heard it's going to be really hard for them to say that you exposed them because they posted it first. It came from them first. It's like, if you're in the grocery store and you see a patient or, or a, uh, a client, uh, you're not supposed to acknowledge them unless they acknowledge you. Does the client have to have a Google email to leave a review? That is a great question. And I believe they do, but I'm not 100% on that. I believe they do. Uh, when editing the business name where you're saying it helps to include the city and state, I didn't catch that part, thanks. Yeah, so... Um, you're just catching a lot of people saying Nashville, Tennessee, acupuncture, Nashville, Tennessee, therapist, Nashville, Tennessee, chiropractor, like, um, branding can be valuable when you're getting into SEO. Um, but it's not essential in the sense that you don't have to name your, your business after the town. It's helpful, but there's lots of other things you can do. Google's not allowed to be published. Any thoughts around this? I had clients write a review for me and Google has not allowed it to be published. Uh, Google does have great support that no one ever uses. So if you search Google support on Google business reviews, you can send an email and someone will reach back to you. Oftentimes they give me a phone number and I can call them. Um, they do have a Google account. Uh, account to leave a review they make a google account with a non-gmail oh yeah that's someone just answering a question uh there is a workaround for them yep good i i love in the chat how you guys are helping each other that's my favorite kind of community oh if you receive a spam review that does happen occasionally you can file a, a review complaint and uh they then review it um which just sucks jess that that happens. Uh, any tip for design of the image? Uh, Ag, are you talking about for your cover photo or I'm not quite sure the image that you're talking about. If you're talking about the branding for your company, I'm a huge fan of Canva. Uh, how do you measure conversions from Google to Gene appointments? Uh, Google Analytics will do that for you. Plus, I always ask patients where they came from. Oh, regular uploads on images. I have an iPhone 14. I think it's worth the business investment if you can afford it um, as a business expense because I use it for so many different things. Um, some of you are Samsung or Galaxy. I don't even know what the other ones are called really. So I'm an iPhone user. I, I find the camera, I almost switched over to a regular camera and the iPhone cameras are so good that um, that's just the way that I go with it. It's close by, it's easy to pick up. Um, I wanna uh, say really quickly that most people are extremely afraid of HIPAA and not being HIPAA compliant and you can get a waiver. So patients can actually waive their HIPAA rights for you to share their information. Um, and there's ways to, so there's ways to do that that are legal. Um, if you are taking pictures of uh, patients or clients, you probably uh, want a really good image release and you want to have some legal 
um, ease to be able to do that rather than just saying, hey, can I take your picture? They say yes. Later, they could come back and say, I never said you could do that. So, oh, wait, wait. Melissa added an update just now, a photo of a massage table, little caption, and a book now button leading right to Jane. Yay! That's exactly, please take one thing away from this. You spent the time to make it to the end, post a photo, make an update, change your categories, like just a little bit. Oh, and here's the email, Carissa. Thank you so much for getting that up there. Google business profile support at google.com. Um, and uh, yeah, I love it. So again, you want a private one hour with me. I love strategy. Uh, I love Google business profiles because it's free. And I love helping wellness providers who want to actually help more people without burning out because we spend way too much time uh, when we're not with patients or clients on the computer. And my hope is that we can do less and less of that. Uh, with the screen, I'm not sure you can see this because of the blurriness, but this is a book I just got, uh, How to Break Up with Your Phone by Catherine Price. Um, and I'm really working on less and less screen time for myself. So we got two minutes. Um, Anything the Jane team wants to say before we close out today? Well, we definitely want to say thank you to you, Jason. This was such a great session. I know that you were keeping an eye on the chat, but it was really phenomenal seeing everyone's chats. They got so much from this. People were doing the work as you were talking. So I love that so much. It was just really lovely. Um, I think that there's potentially some more questions in here that we could turn into some content for Jane and share back to you, Jason. And hopefully we could do a part two. People are interested in your thoughts on Trustpilot or other review sites, LinkedIn, you know, Facebook reviews. So I'm, I'm not sure if you go into all of that, but I would, lo would love to chat with you more about that in the in the future if you're open to it. Uh, I love it. I Again, I want to thank Jane. You know, your other EHRs are not doing webinars like this. So you guys are doing an amazing, amazing job.